remember this first stage again is trying to get TSH to come down. And the only way that I figured out how to lower TSH is by improving uh, thyroid hormone levels circulating in the blood. The dilemma is that the thyroid, if we avoid iodide, there's no way that the thyroid can make its own hormones, thereby helping to decrease TSH. And that's the reason, that's the role of pharmacy when it comes to treating Hashimoto's. Again, I know there is a resistance in a lot of people about using a pharmacy. They want to do things naturally. Uh, but in this case, at least temporarily, the use of a thyroid prescription is, in my experience, absolutely necessary. Uh, so this next, this next presentation is about the different types of thyroid prescriptions. And then the next video after that is how we'll use them in, in a very cautious uh, but um, efficacious way. So from what you learned in the last uh, presentation is that the most important um, objective of this first phase of uh, treating Hashimoto's is to lower TSH because it's stimulating the production of hydrogen peroxide. And part of the way we're going to do this is by reducing iodide and iodine. Um, partly because they will stimulate the, um, the uh, production of TSH, which will be explained shortly. The other way of lowering TSH is to increase thyroid hormones. But the question then is, in this first phase, how do we increase thyroid hormone production um, to reduce TSH if we can't take iodide? Seems like we have another apparent dilemma. But the only way I've discovered how to increase thyroid hormones is through a thyroid medication. Remember, if we can increase thyroid hormones, it will lead to a decline in TSH and therefore reduce uh, thyroid inflammation. Let's talk about thyroid pharmacy for a moment. I wish there was some way of <coughs> lowering TSH other than by having to increase thyroid hormones, but it's the only way that I've found to, um, to resolve this, um, this dilemma. So let's talk about thyroid pharmacy. There's two primary hormones, as you know. There's the T4 and the T3 thyroid hormones. So there's three types of prescriptions. There's the basic T4, which is what most physicians prescribe, which is known, the medication is known as Synthroid or L-thyroxine or Levothyroxine. And then there's um, a combination of both hormones in a prescription. And there's just a prescription for the single T3 thyroid hormone. So with a T4 or Synthroid or Levothyroxine, uh, there are some disadvantages. One is that um, because a person has low thyroid hormones or hypothyroidism, they're diagnosed, they're given a prescription. It does not address those reasons we sp that I spoke about before, which is the lack of those nutrients that which the thyroid requires to make those hormones. Therefore, a person is taking medication without really having their physician address the cause, which is a nutrient deficiency. And those other nutrients, the iodide, the selenium, zinc, and iron are also very important for other um, health purposes. So that's one disadvantage of simply getting a prescription for hypothyroidism. And also remember that that T4 is the um, is not the primary activating thyroid hormone that um, increases metabolism and energy. It must be converted to T3. And you'll learn about that in another video, but a lot of people on Synthroid or L-thyroxine, their physicians say, may say you're on the right dose, but they don't feel um, all that much better because they're not converting, not able to convert the T4 to the activating thyroid hormone T3. Um, the combination of T4 and T3, that prescription, there's a few different uh, types. One is uh, the pig thyroid gland. Um, it's called Armor or Nature Throid, um, and also there is the compounded T4 and T3. 
the uh, pig glandular is um, uh, the the cell is very much uh, very close to being identical with a human uh, cell, which means that when you swallow the pig thyroid desiccated thyroid uh, tissue, the stomach um, enzymes break the cells down, and you have the release of the thyroid hormones, which are absorbed and and um, make up for the deficiency in hypothyroidism. The problem is that when you when these cells are digested, the protein thyroglobulin is also released, and the thyroperoxidase uh, also uh, is released from the digested pig cells. Now. <clears throat> I've, I've um, ex had the experience that uh, people taking uh, the glandular uh, at actually activating their uh, Hashimoto's, their immune system, their antibodies uh, go up. Therefore, I no longer recommend uh, the Armour or Nature Throid for anyone that has these elevated thyroid antibodies. These antibodies are specific for thyroglobulin, they're specific for thyroperoxidase. So I, I prefer, in fact, I, I um, will prescribe only the compound of T4 and T3 to uh, Hashimoto's patients. Um, it's uh, both the T4 and T3 are synthetic. The T4 is basically the same thing as L-thyroxine. The T3 is synthetic, similar to, uh, as you'll learn, what's called cytomel. Uh, it comes in two forms. The primary one, which is uh, uh, compounded by most pharmacies, is the time release. Uh, they put a certain type of cellulose in the mixture, which stays sort of as a, a small little bolus or ball, and it's meant that it's supposed to slowly dissolve in the gut and be more of a time release. And you'll understand the reasons for that when we get to T3. There's also the immediate release, where they do not include that, um, that binding factor. And there's other fillers as well because you know you're getting down into the micrograms, which is a really small amount of hormone. So I had to put other fillers in to fill up the capsule. So I prefer again the immediate release um, uh, because I think the slow release, and I've got labs that, to prove it, the slow release is not absorbed nearly as well as the immediate release. I prefer the rice filler rather than synthetics, and also um, I. I, I ask for the veggie caps rather than the uh, animal gelatin capsules. The other route of administering T4 and T3 is to have them in a mix of cocoa butter. This is placed under the tongue, uh, where most of it's absorbed uh, under the tongue and also in the cheeks. And if it's swallowed, um, it is, it's also absorbed. And it doesn't have any of the fillers. Uh, I use this primarily for people that I know have gut ecology problems that have candida in the mouth or the esophagus or the, the stomach, uh, the small intestine, and they will not absorb these hormones all that well. Therefore, I prefer uh, having them put the, um, uh, pharma the prescription under their tongue. Then the final uh, category is just simply T3, known as cytomel. Um, it's the same T3 that's in the compounded T4 and T3. And um, some people that are already on Synthroid or T4, we'll just add some T3 uh, to their prescription. So how is um, thyroid medication prescribed? And that's, um, that's a topic of, uh, of a future uh, presentation. Oh, I guess it's not. Uh, usually, I'm not talking about Hashimoto's now, I'm talking about hypothyroidism. Um, the, the initial uh, dose, milligram dose of uh, thyroid medication, usually T4, is based upon the person's weight and their, their gender. So all um, <coughs> thyroid hormones have a half-life, uh, both T4 and T3. Also TSH has a half-life, a very, very, very short half-life. A half-life of T4 is seven days. That means that half the medication that's swallowed on day one by day seven is is half there and by day 14 approximately none of that medication will still be left in the system. I try to make a little bit of a graph here to help you understand about um, uh, a little bit about uh, metabolism of thyroid hormones. The blue line which starts on day one is as if you swallowed 
the tablet of uh, thyroid hormones and it slowly increases in the system and slowly declines after six seven days until by day 14 there's nothing left the red line above it should be shifted to day two that would be the second tablet taken on day two you can see how it sort of builds upon itself until finally after about seven and ten days of taking a tablet each day it reaches sort of a plateau and because of T, uh, T4's long half-life of seven days, even if you skipped one of your medications on one day, it's not going to really cause any kind of a major dip in the amount of circulating uh, thyroid hormone T4. And with T3, the um, half-life is about eight to 12 hours. So if you're using either Cytomel or if you're using the immediate release combination of T4 and T3, it's very important that your, your dose is taken once in the morning and then around uh, four in the afternoon uh, because that dose in the morning is gone, half gone by four in the afternoon, somewhere in there, it depends upon the metabolism. Uh, but um, so a, lot of, a lot of physicians don't like to use T3. They don't really know that much about it. Um, a lot of physicians are trying out the combination, the compound of T4 and T3, but I don't think they really understand uh, the problem with the, um, the slow release or time release. Um, a number of people have consulted me with, with obvious problems of absorption, and uh, it just um, the, the um, slow release just doesn't work all that well compared to the immediate. So you know, the, um, you know about thyroid hormones now, the different types of hormones that can be prescribed. Um, but when it comes to Hashimoto's, it's very important not only the, the type of uh, thyroid medication that's prescribed, but also how to take it. And that's the subject of, our, of the next presentation. So I hope that gives you a, a pretty good idea about the different types of thyroid prescriptions that are, that are available. Um, I know that many people have a resistance about using a prescription. They like to try to do things naturally. Uh, some people ask about um, supplements which actually have thyroid gland as one of the ingredients. Uh, manufacturers are not allowed to include the uh, thyroxin or T4 thyroid hormone. They can include the T3. But the pituitary, which produces TSH, is sensitive primarily to T4, but also to T3. But taking T3 alone is often not enough to uh, cause a decline in TSH. And that's the reason why I recommend using both the combination of T4 and T3. The next um, uh, presentation is on how to use the prescription, which is uh, very specific for Hashimoto's. So uh, go ahead to the next video on how to prescribe thyroid medication for Hashimoto's.